Allie Borealis here. Welcome to my channel and thanks for subscribing. I really want to tell you, I make these videos to show everyone what's possible. You know, there was a time where I wasn't reselling anything and I didn't know what I was looking at in a thrift store. And that was only a few years ago. So I want to show you what I've sold things for so maybe you could see what you could sell things for as well. I'm a thrifter and a reseller and decided to take part of my stash and just do a one-time online auction with it through CT Bids. So most of what I put in that auction is jewelry, but there are a couple other pieces that aren't jewelry. And I'm gonna show you what I paid for everything, thrift store prices, and what everything sold for in the end. All in all, I, this was a really great auction for me. And uh, I'm gonna talk about the pieces and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about CT Bids if you're not uh, aware of what CT Bids is. This is not a sponsored video. I just wanted to share with you all some alternatives for your listings. Sometimes I list things through CT Bids when I feel like they've been on eBay a while and they're not getting a whole lot of interest. Sometimes I list things because I think I can get better prices on CT bids. And sometimes I list things because I'm just ready to get rid of them. And I know if I do an auction through CT bids, they're gonna get sold and get out of my house. CT bids is a franchise. They usually do full estate clear outs. But if you talk to whoever your local franchise owner is, you can probably work out a deal to put some listings in their auction occasionally and see what kind of rate they'll give you. I found the best way to do this is to start by being a customer, by winning some things in one of their auctions, and then developing a relationship with the owner, and they'll probably be more likely to have you pop some things into their auction occasionally, especially if you're willing to do all the photos and the descriptions on your end. My first item is a vintage turquoise cuff. Um, I did test it for sterling, it wasn't sterling, but the back has a small Mexico stamp on it. And you know, it's obviously handmade. I paid $16.53 at my local savers and I sold it for $26. I pulled this pair of 14 karat heart earrings out of a Goodwill blue box. The blue boxes are usually around five pounds. So I had five pounds of jewelry and this was just one thing I sold out of that box. They were two grams of 14 karat gold in total weight. So I paid $55.11 for the whole five pound box. And I sold this pair of earrings for $118, which more than covered the cost of the box. The next thing I have is this 14 karat gold 0.12 gram letter T pendant. I pulled this out of a very abundant savers jewelry jar that I did a video on. It's jackpot jewelry jars part two. If you wanna watch that, I've already made $175.99 off of this jar. So I knew anything I made on this pendant was just gonna be extra. I paid $41.33 for the whole jar. I sold the pendant for $26. Plus, if you add in the $175.99 that I already made on this jar, it was a really good jar. I picked up this sterling silver and cubic zirconia tennis style bracelet at a thrift store in Miami. I'm gonna be doing a Miami video as part of my thrifting from coast to coast series. If you wanna check it out, it was a really great thrift store. So for this particular bracelet, I paid $2. Like I said, it was a great thrift store with really good prices. And I sold this bracelet for $35. This necklace is a bar style. It's sterling silver made in Turkey. Now I got this necklace in Billings, Montana at a thrift store and it was tangled up with a Tiffany necklace. It was out on the floor. So I brought it to the counter realizing I had a Tiffany necklace in my hand. The woman quoted me on the Tiffany necklace, not realizing that the necklace it was tangled with was sterling. So I got this necklace for free and I sold it for $20.01. If you wanna hear more about that Tiffany necklace, I'm doing a Billings part two video in my thrifting from Coast to Coast series. So check it out when I post it. The next thing I have is this gorgeous green necklace that I picked up at a Salvation Army. I initially thought it might be turquoise and I posted it in one of my turquoise groups on Facebook and was told that it's not turquoise. So then I needed to investigate it a little bit more and I found out it's a natural stone called gaspiite. 
And the necklace end cones are sterling silver with the Native American rising sun hallmark on it. I paid $7.99 for this necklace and I sold it for $255. I picked up this bracelet at a thrift store in Santa Barbara. They had it out with just all the other random bracelets. They didn't have it with the sterling. And I knew at first glance that I had sterling and Larimar on my hands. And I took a closer look at it and the sterling 925 mark is just very tiny. Stores do miss things in their vetting which can work in your favor. I paid $6.45 for this bracelet and I sold it for $112.87. I sold these as two separate lots, but I'm showing them together because they came out of the same box that I bought off of Facebook Marketplace. The box was mostly full of rings and earrings. I decided to lump all the rings together and sell them in one lot. And then I'm piecing out the earrings. I still have about 90 more pair of earrings out of this box to sell. I paid $98 for the box. The 15 pair of earrings sold for $10 and the lot of 135 plus rings sold for $102. So at this point I've made what I paid for the box. This next collection I got out of a very small crafts bag and it consisted of three brooches and one scarf clip. One brooch is Judy Lee and one brooch is R. Mandel and the scarf clip is Western Germany. The bag also had a very old patent pending Trafari brooch that had some rhinestones missing that I had sold already on eBay for $18.99. So I, the total I paid for this bag was $10.76. So I'm already ahead on the bag and I knew I could sell these brooches off as well. The sale price on these brooches was $21. If you add the Trafari brooch so far, I've made $39.99. I picked up this 14 karat gold chain at a thrift store and it was originally priced at $74, I believe, and I was supposed to get a discount on it. And when I got it home, I bought a couple things. I got it home and I was examining the receipts and I realized they read the seven in the 74 as a one and they gave it to me with a discount for $12.12 and it sold for $121. These beautiful garnet and sterling earrings I got out of another huge box that I got off of Facebook Marketplace that, and this was just the box that kept on giving. I got a Louis Vuitton bracelet out of there that I had authenticated and sold. I got a pair of 14 karat Kubrick zirconia earrings that sold for like a hundred bucks. Uh, I have a 1940s uh, Mexico biker ring that I haven't sold yet, but it's on the list. So I've already made a ton of money on this box. $579.98 to be exact. So these garnet earrings are just adding to the pile. Uh, so these are uh, really pretty sterling and garnet earrings. They are hallmarks with a cursive L and I, I wasn't able to find out who this belongs to. So if anybody knows which company this cursive L belongs to, please write in the comments. I'm so curious to add that to my data bank. I paid $96.90 for this entire box and I sold these earrings for $40.01 which brings the grand total so far, there's more to sell, on that box to $619.99. Whew, we are finished looking at all the jewelry I put in this auction, and I put a couple of non-jewelry items that we're gonna look at, and I saved the best one for last. I saw this painting on the wall of a thrift store and I did a quick Google on the signature and saw that her artwork sells for quite a bit. It looked like an original to me is why it caught my eye. I brought it to the register because everything in the store was 50% off that day. And that's when I noticed on the edge of the painting, it had a name, Hilo Rain. And as I looked into the artist a little bit more, I realized she does Hawaiian themed art and is very well known. And her name is Diana Hansen Young. This painting is from 1986. Like I said, I got a 50% discount. So when I brought it to the register, I bought it for $25 and it sold for $130.
I usually always make a profit on my items. There's only been two times when I haven't. The first time I misjudged the shipping cost on a fragile item, and the second time was this auction. I picked up these three match canisters. They were branded by Sango and they were in Zuni pattern from 1988. And I thought for sure they would do well. One of the drawbacks of CT bids is that everything starts at a dollar. So you really gotta know your market. You really gotta be confident as to what's gonna get more than you paid for it before you put it in the auction. Otherwise, I'll sell it on eBay. And I thought these canisters were gonna get more than I paid. So I paid $12 for these canisters and I sold them for $9.88. Wah, wah. I saw this trivet and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the artist's name. I picked it up because it's Native American and it has a really unique kachina, which is mud head. And, you know, I see a lot of kachina used in jewelry and this mud head kachina always just fascinates me. I thought, oh, you don't see this one a whole, whole lot. So let me pick this one up because it's so unique. I paid $3.36 for this and I sold it for $25. The last thing I found, I got at a very large church thrift store. It was interesting because they it seemed like they had a lot of stuff that came through that thrift store, but they hardly had prices on anything. Uh, so I saw these Cutco knives with the butcher block. It's a nice set. It is missing a steak knife and I think the sharpener, but it looks like this person added on the scissors and the scissor holder to the side from the research I could tell. So, and Cutco, I believe, has a lifetime uh, sharpening warranty. So Cutco knives sell for quite a bit of money. So I saw this block of knives sitting with some other blocks of knives that weren't Cutco and I didn't see a price. So I brought it to the register thinking they were going to quote me a high price on these Cutco knives. And they sold this to me for $8.50. And I sold them for $480. So when you add up everything I sold in this auction, the grand total comes to $1,531.77. It was a great auction. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button. It's free. <laughs>